most notably, probably um, a small indie film, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, <laughs> it's done okay. So we're on our, we just passed, we just finished our fifth one, and it's in the theaters. Mm -hmm. So we're doing okay. Go Disney. <laughs> Woo! Woo -woo. To Disney. All right. Um, so I'll put up for the questions right right now. So right here. All right. You can go. Um, uh, you know what? I, I started off as, as an actor dancer on Broadway. I um, worked at Radio City Music Hall for 10 years doing the uh, Christmas show. And then I moved over to uh, Madison Square Garden, who ended up buying Radio City. And I did um, two years of a national tour of The Wizard of Oz, where I played Nico, which is the king of the monkeys, and um, one of the lollipop kids. Uh, I could have been the mayor, but I was kind of young at the time. I was like maybe 30, not even 30. It was, before, it was 20 or 30s. So, um, and finally when I turned 30, I moved to LA and um, that's it. I, I met the right people, I guess, and started off uh, working at Universal Studios as Alvin of the Chipmunks, doing six shows a day. And uh, a couple of stunt guys came across me and just, you know, hey, have you ever thought about doing stunts? You know, could you do it for little kids, blah, blah, blah. And here I am, after Stuntman. So, doing okay. Not too bad. Nice. Questions? Yep. Charles from Inspire the Muse. I was curious if you could talk a little bit about your foundation's coalition for school of advocacy. And oh, thank you. Awesome. Yes, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Matt Roloff, and I, um, he's from uh, Little People Big World. We started a charity, uh, which I continue, and he's, he's since moved on, um, called Coalition of Dwarf Advocacy, where I uh, help get dwarf children adopted from around the world, um, especially from countries like China or Russia, where if you're born different, no matter what it is, um, you're looked at as a, um, more as a burden to a family than as an asset. Um, if you can't, they look at you, if you can't work and bring in money or do something or work the farms, or whatever you want to say, uh, you're just kind of put away. And so there's, you know, a lot of families in the U.S. that um, maybe two little people and they have double dominant genes, so the baby doesn't survive. So eventually they just um, they just go ahead and want to look for, you know, maybe a child who's sitting out there somewhere who needs a home. So we started doing that. We do some fundraisers like uh, I have a basketball team called the Stunt. Uh, the statesman, and um, we play games against average size people and raise money, and um, we've yet to be beat yet. And I've, we've played against ex NBA players, um, actors, wrestlers, all kinds of things. So we we just show that people that um, you know little people could do the same things, just you know, be given the opportunity. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's something, uh, it's a good, great question. We actually deal with that because I, I, not every single role I've ever done has been favorable, I guess, in some people's minds. Um, for instance, like probably with Pro Project X, but I try to show on the opposite side of it, like, um, well, yeah, they, they, you know, I get shoved into an oven, but when I come out, I kick the shit out of everybody. So, you know, teaching, don't, don't mess with people, you know, just because they have a disability or a, or a challenge. And, um, but for the most part, uh, I think society would like us to move away from having to always play an elf or a leprechaun or some kind of creature, trolls or hobbit or some, you know, stuff and move more centered to, you know, even like pirates. Um, my main goal with pirates was to make the audience forget that Marty is a little guy it, it's, he's just a, a pirate who happens to be short. Instead of, oh look, there's the short pirate, you know, with, you know, with all the puns that go along with it and comedy and stuff like that. Thank you. Next question. Yes. I'm Anna Malcolm from University of Connecticut. Can you explain us the things on your jacket? Because you have like quite a collection. 
Yeah, yeah. I have uh, over 500 um, uh, pins from uh, the various police agencies across the United States and even some overseas. Um, I'm a big Blue Life Matter um, kind of guy. Uh, I, I feel like the, uh, the police have gotten a bad rap in, in society and they're not looked at the way they were, you know, maybe 60 or 70 years ago, like when my grandfather was a cop and, you know, to just protect and to serve and, you know, they're nothing more than civilians on patrol, which is what, you know, COP stands for. And um, uh, I just want to, you know, make sure that people realize that there are good guys out there too that are, you know, still wear the badge and, you know, for the most part, you know, if you, we set up laws in this country, you know, for various reasons, whether it's for catching speeders or catching a murderer. And if you're putting your life on the line every single day, I've done ride along, so I know what it's like to be hyped up you know, with your adrenaline, I, I see it when, um, you know, somebody's not wanting to pull over or giving them a hard time. Instead of just complying, go to, you have your day in court, you go to court, and, you know, you deal with it that way. Not to say that there hasn't been injustices, you know, whether uh, for different nationalities or, you know, countries of origin people, but, um, you know, it's, it's more of a... Um, just I think if, if we gave them more respect, they would give more respect back. Maybe they didn't, maybe they've lost that somewhere along the line, but I think they, they want to earn that back. And um, if I can bring that awareness out there, then, then yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Yep. Questions? Yep. Don't do it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, I hate, that's your dreams, dude. You know, you got to reach for it. Uh, I always, my quote is, uh, live for today, don't worry about yesterday because you can't wait. Live for today. Live for today. Oh, yeah. Live for today, don't worry about tomorrow because you can't change yesterday. So, you know, if that's what you want to do, you just got to, you know, go for it and don't give up. You know, there is a, obviously a point where, you know, if it's been 20 years, it might be a time to move on. And, um, but, you know, if, this, if you're really passionate about it, then go for it. Whether it's, you know, being an actor or you know, a librarian or anything. Just, you know, you gotta go for it, no matter what, 100%. Questions? Be a good agent. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Oh, good. Um, you know what? I, I love being on Broadway. I, I think every actor truly wishes they could make the money. You know, maybe they do make it over there on Broadway, but there's nothing like going in front of a live audience where you make a mistake, you, you can't take it back. You know, it's, so there's that exhilaration, there's that um, that feeling of being alive. You know, you're not being directed; you're directing yourself along the way. You know, after you've taken the initial direction and um, it, there's just something great about, you know, after the show's over with, going backstage to the back door and, you know, you have people out there who want to get your autograph or meet you and um, just tell you, you know, they appreciate what you've brought to them throughout the evening or daytime, depends what time you see it. And, um, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's more of a family feel, I guess, than uh, like a film. I mean, you have pirates. You know, when you're on something for six, seven months, you definitely become a family where most movies take 30 days at the most. Um, you, you don't really get that time to really bond. But like when you're on tour or if you're on a Broadway show, you're with these people, you know, every day for a good, good long, good long haul. So, yeah. I don't know why I sound so nervous or not, but <laughs> that coffee's got me hyped up, I guess. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. In the back. Um, the last thing I finished was a film called Mystery of the Dragon, The Journey to China, which is a sequel to another movie called um, V, B-I-Y. Um, it's, it's a story of, it's like a 17th century um, story about a cartographer, a guy who draws maps, and his journey along the way doing it. And this one obviously takes him to China. It stars um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jackie Chan, Rucker Howard, Charles Dance, Jason Fleming. So it's got a pretty good cast. 
Um, it's going to be, it's a Russian slash Chinese co-production with Jet Li, or um, Jackie Chan's production company. And um, it's, it's, I've seen some of it, it's really amazing. So we shot that in Prague, and uh, the rest of it was all done in China. So it was pretty sweet. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm not sure it's a Pirates of the Caribbean, but it's, it's pretty, pretty eye tantalizing. Awesome. Questions? Yeah. Back home to Detroit, just, uh, I did, uh, I did, I got the chance to do Oz, the Great and Powerful, back home. And also when I was on tour with um, the Broadway show, just, you know, something about going back home and seeing everybody that you grew up with who are now coming to, see, you know, pay money to see you in the theater or, you know, whichever theater it might be. But, you know, being able to sit in the audience with your mom and your dad and with your friends or, you know, family and, and watch something or perform in front of them, um, something that you've dedicated your life to. And uh, so I'm like, hey, I, you know, I did it, I made it. So I guess, yeah, I mean, Australia was okay, it's all right. But the islands, uh, honestly, the first three pirates were all down in the Caribbean, and that was, I actually enjoyed that more than Australia. Uh, not a slight against Australia, just there was more of a real Caribbean feel to it, obviously. So, um, I, you know, that was pretty sweet. Awesome. I had a question myself, actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, in terms of the uh, entertainment industry, I was wondering, as a successful man, is, it, is there ever a point where you feel like, yeah, I made it to su success, or is there like a, is it a constant grind? Oh, it's a constant you, grind. Uh, constantly, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm married and I have, you know, I have a son who's 20, almost 21, and just when I thought I was done, my, my wife now wrote me back in, now we have a four and a half year old, so I've got to do this a good another 12, 15 years till she's out of high school. And then I can hopefully retire. And the wife's quite a bit younger than I am, so she's a teacher and uh, hopefully she can take the reins at some time. She does pretty well. Trust me, the teachers make a lot of money. So, yeah. Don't listen to them when they say that they don't make enough. They, well, they don't make enough for what they do, if you really think about it. I agree. You know, she's got like 35 students in the class, and if half of them aren't even supposed to be there, you know, and they're taking up space because they're not there to learn, they're just there because, you know, the parents need a babysitter, you know, throughout the day, then it's kind of hard to teach and reach the kids that do want to learn. But for the most part, you know, she's got a pretty great job. Awesome. What would you say is your uh, proudest achievement, personally? Being a dad. Being a dad? Yeah, being yeah. a dad. I mean, I love my son. It's, you know, I, could, I couldn't put a measure on it, but when I found out that I was going to have a little girl, I was kind of first a little devastated, like, oh, shit. <laughs> my life is going to come back to haunt me. But now, man, she's my best friend, and she's like, you know, just watching, you know, when your daughter looks at you, there's nothing nothing greater than that, and you just want to squeeze the shit out of her until her head pops out. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. awesome. So everybody go out there and have a little girl. <laughs> no, maybe not yet. Maybe not yet, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, you know, I think every actor thinks like that because, you know, it's just inherently our our, uh, our nature. We're always looking at it like, well, I would do it this way or, you know, and you then you start to start going, wow, well, God, hopefully someday somebody will, you know, give me the opportunity to, even if you first AD, you know, where the director will let you, you know, have some say or something, but um, producing, if you're producing, then you've got money, so it means you've done pretty well. But if you're directing, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, I think that's almost a pinnacle because now your fellow actors are, you know, looking to you to direct them in a direction, um, directly, you know, directed, directed, I don't know, whatever word. But yeah, I mean, I'd love to, but right now I'll just, uh, I'll keep plugging away. I love doing stunts. Um, the acting's always cool, but 
being a stuntman is exhilarating and you never know if you're gonna, you know, you get hurt every once in a while and sometimes you're like, damn, I bought it to this. But, um, you know, it's pretty exciting. So I'm, I'm gonna stick with the, uh, the acting directing. I'm not sure the world's ready for something I would direct. Thank you. Questions? Just meeting the people that you, you never realize what some people do when they're not at work at the regular job or, you know, like seeing you dressed up. Like, I might not, if I was to know you outside of this and I didn't know you were doing this, it would be just kind of interesting that like, wow, she, she likes to get dressed up and play make-believe or, you know, whatever. It's kind of like we're all a little bit, like we're still, you know, kids and we're free willed and we're you know able to play house or something or you know, play make believe and it's kind of cool to like see some of the costumes that these kids or these people really get into and which you know may really put make an impact on their life so i'm very shocked by some of the things i see and it's it's a uh, it's always cool and for people to explain you know what it is they're portraying because half the stuff i don't know because i don't get out much if I'm not watching the Disney Channel, you know, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, I'm, I don't know much besides Sophia and uh, some of them guys. So, yeah, Doc and stuff. So. Well, thank you. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I'm sorry. We're in a, we're in a tight right. schedule. Thank right. you so much for right. coming thank by. Thank you guys very much. Yeah. We will be back shortly with our last Go and blue. final guest. Michigan. Go Blue, Michigan.